Well, down to you, good morning, good Easter Tuesday. It is uh, <laughs> that kind of time of year, isn't it? When I feel like we have such a buildup to this season and then it's over. <laughs> And maybe you feel like that at special times of year like this, Christmas and Thanksgiving and Easter. Maybe you feel like that about special events that you've gone through. I often say to people, you know, when they're planning to be wed, and I say, you know, you will be married before you know it. So drink it in and, and suck it up and enjoy the whole process. Sometimes people feel like this with special announcements like oh I don't know how about the birth of your granddaughter <laughs> and we're milking this as long as we can because we want it to be just as special as the moment she came home from the hospital a few days ago and when it comes to this you know Easter season I feel like you know we've been building up we've been building up and we had this wonderful culmination on Sunday morning here and this is the most people we've had in this building between those two services since we were back to worship since last March the 8th. Now there are a lot of people away, so that was really saying something that we had that many people over those two services. Technology went well. The people who were involved in the service did a terrific job and I so appreciate them being involved. Really grateful that people seem to be happy and thankful. We were keeping to our safety protocols and so it was just great. I mean, it was just, it was just great. And then I look around here and I think, so is that it? Do I need to take the cross with the, the shroud on it down now? Is that time? And, you know, do we take down a few of the decorations that we had and do we just move on? I don't want to move on too quick. <laughs> I just don't want to move on too quickly. So I mockingly call this or jokingly call this Easter Tuesday. We seem to have Easter Monday, which was yesterday. And okay, let's, let's not let the profound nature of this time of remembrance and celebration of the resurrected and reigning King Jesus, let's just not let it go by too fast. And so we normally do this on Fridays, but we didn't do it this past week. And I thought I would read to you a few lines from a very helpful book this time of year, 50 Reasons Why Jesus Came to Die by John Piper. This was put out a number of years ago. Oh, two maybe? Oh, six, 2006. And it's used as a, as a devotional. Uh, I have some copies of, my, of these in my office. In fact, if one of you are thinking, hey, I'd like to grab a hold of that, I'd be happy to leave it out for you on Sunday morning. But I wanna read a little portion from it. And it's just a collection of all of the different reasons and accountings for and the how comes he did Jesus had to come to die and so let me offer this one and then I'll have a few announcements at the end of our time so this is the 47th reason why Jesus came to die Jesus came to die to here's the reason 47 rescue us from the final judgment we are all looking towards the end of this medical crisis of Corona-19. Sadly, some people are looking to the end of their lives as a result of it. But people are always looking forward. We're always looking forward to saying, is it going to be okay when all's been said and done? Is, is everything just gonna be all right? And the text here says, Hebrews chapter nine, verse 28, Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. And so John Piper writes, the Christian idea of salvation relates to past, present, and future. The Bible says in Ephesians 2.8, by grace you have been saved through faith. 1 Corinthians 1 in verse 18 says, it says that the gospel is the power of God to us who are being saved. And in Romans 13, 11, salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. We have been saved, we are being saved, and we will be saved. At every stage, we are saved by the death of Christ. In the past, once for all, 
our sins were paid for by Christ himself. We are justified by faith alone. And in the present, the death of Christ secures the power of God's Spirit to save us progress progressively from the dominion and contamination of sin. And in the future, it will be the blood of Christ poured out on the cross that protects us from the wrath of God and brings us to perfection and joy. There is a real judgment coming. The Bible describes a, quote, fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries, Hebrews 10, 27. It calls us to live with, quote, reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire, Hebrews 12, 28 and 29. John the Baptist warned the people of his day to, quote, flee from the wrath to come, in Matthew 3 and verse 7. For Jesus himself will be, quote, revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. That comes from 2 Thessalonians 1 and 7 to 9. Some pictures of this final wrath of God are almost too terrible to ponder. Ironically, it is John, the apostle of love, who gives us the most graphic glimpses of hell. Those who reject Christ and give their allegiance to another will, quote, drink the wine of God's wrath, poured full strength into the cup of his anger, and will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb and the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. They will have no rest day or night. That's from the revelation given to John chapter 14, 10 to 11. Until we feel some measure of dread about God's future wrath, we will not properly grasp the sweetness with which the early church savored the saving work of Christ in the future. I want to repeat that sentence. Until we feel some measure of dread about God's future wrath, we will probably not grasp the sweetness with which the early church savored the saving work of Christ in the future. We wait for his Son from heaven, 1 Thessalonians 1.10. We wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Jesus Christ, and he alone can save us from the wrath to come. Without him, we will be swept away forever. But when he saves us in the end, it will be on the basis of his blood. Again, Hebrews 9, 28. Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Sin was dealt with once for all. No new sacrifice is needed. Our shield from future wrath is as sure as the sufferings of Christ in our place. For the sake of the cross, then, exult in future grace. Well, friends, I'm going to leave that thought or two with you in terms of the certainty of being saved from a legitimate wrath to come and pray that if any of you are watching, listening to this, who have not surrendered your life to the person, the Lordship, the majesty and the might of Christ, that you would do so today to avoid the very kind of wrath that the scriptures speak about. Now, as far as our church family, remember, friends, we're going to say that each time this week, we hope we'll get it right, one service this Sunday, the first service, one and the first, <laughs> 9.30, and then we will immediately follow that service with our annual meeting at 10.30.
If you're not going to come to the service at 9.30, you will have the opportunity to join in by Zoom for the annual meeting at 10.30. So watch this broadcast in your emails throughout the week and we will send you out a link for the Zoom meeting. As far as the church service itself at 9.30, we can still only have about 25 people upstairs here. And we will also have, therefore, the opportunity to have a bit of an overflow in the basement. We already have a television set that's set up down there, but RJ and Ranillo have already taken the projector and, and made some adjustments downstairs, so we'll have video at least, and there's some parts on order, so we hope they'll be in on time so that you can hear the audio downstairs as well. And so we'll be able to have 25 up and 25 down, socially distant, keeping our masks on, all of those things. But so the service, there'll be able to be some room downstairs. Point is that as many people as want to come from the last week can come this week, same as if we had two services, but there's only one of them at 9.30 for this week. So keep that in mind if you could, would and spread the word. Go to Downsview Baptist Church and please reserve your seat. We want to know who will be here. We want to keep those that information for any need for contact tracing. And again, I am just so pleased that we are back live. We'll see how long it lasts. I want to encourage you to be safe, be smart, be wise, be loving to your neighbor. Get that vaccine as quickly as you can and see to it that you keep being diligent, especially about our social gatherings. The number one way that this thing has been spreading without question, without uh, any kind of uh, other focus in that, we know that's been the result. So please uh, keep your social interactions down to a minimum. When you do, keep them safe and get yourself vac vaccinated so that we will help love our neighbors and take care of one another as we see this slowly coming to at least an end at the light of the tunnel. All right, friends, it's been good to be with you.